All right, so I've been waiting for this one to come in for quite some time. Looking forward to unboxing it and showing it to you at home. Show it to me. Yeah, you want to see it? Yes, I want to see it. It's from our friends at Bat Caddy. Fragili. Nope, nope, that's wrong. Fragili? Much, much better. I literally just got this in and couldn't wait to unbox it. Came straight in here to show you what's in the box. And open the box! Open the box! Open the box! Let's put this away before I cut myself. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. We'll see what that goes to in a minute. I know what this is too, I'll show you in a minute. A nice comfy spot to sit, or at least we hope. Some assembly required. Perfect assembly. And last but not least, a few accessories. I'm still surprised nobody's come up with a better way to pack and ship stuff than this foam material. It just makes such a mess when you take it out of the box. A little messy. Ta-da! It is, well, what is it? I have no idea. One more minute. All right, so I'm officially done putting this together. It took me about 20 minutes or so to add the accessories. And what you see here is we got an actual scorecard holder. Let me change the angle for you guys. It's a little bit better. Got the scorecard holder that opens up. Got room for a pencil, room for tees. We have the umbrella holder. And I added the cup holder down here. And of course, all this is a little bit adjustable to where we could manipulate it and adjust it if needed. And most important is I have the seat. So let's do a seat test on this. Uh, I'm a big guy, so I'm, in, I'm curious to test this out and see how it does. Let's see how we do. Here's the seat test. And uh, I don't know how secure I feel about it as a 280 something pound guy, but let's see how it does. All right, so I gotta say, I feel comfortable with my golf bag on, on the cart, should help to even it out, but I was advised that you wanna sit straight down. You don't wanna be leaning, obviously, because I think you'll definitely eat it if you do that. But I'm pretty pumped about the seat because every now and then you need to take a load off, especially if you're a big guy like me. Way to go. All right, so we passed the seat test and we'll keep testing that out for you and I'll let you know how the seat does. Um, there's really nothing that states a weight limit. Again, I'm in the upper 200s, so I'm just be honest with you, about 285 or so. Um, so we'll put a good testing on this bad boy and see how it does and how it holds up. Let's put a bag on it so I can show you a little bit more about that and then I think we're ready to get out to the golf course. What do you think? All right, so here we have our sticks golf clubs that we've done a review on now on the channel and um, really, really enjoying these. Let's go ahead and put these on the bag and see how they do and how everything gets put together. Quick and easy setup. Now this is probably not gonna be so vertical, so I'm gonna adjust that down to allow room for the bag. It's the great thing about this is you can adjust it as you need to. I don't want my clubs touching the cart. I don't want my clubs touching the scorecard holder. So I'm just gonna adjust it a little bit more down. Just like that, ought to do just fine. And where the straps are, there's these little bungees. and they hold on to your bag just like that. There's one on the top, and there's one down here at the bottom. This will wrap right around, right through, and that holds on to your golf bag. So, here's the final product. And this is as simple as that. So we're ready to take this out to the golf course, but let me show you one other thing quickly. 
All right, one final thing is the remote. So here you see the remote. It's gonna give you, as a time button, it has forward, backwards, right or left. Um, so we're gonna be testing this out on the golf course as well. On the actual Bat Caddy X8R as well, there's an adjustment knob here that you'll see. Uh, and this is going to adjust the speed when you're out on the golf course. So I think there's, I think there's something like eight different settings for speed. And um, so that's really, really cool. And I think we've pretty much shown everything that we can show here. So I think it's about time that we get you guys out to the golf course. Let's go ahead and take it out to the golf course now. We'll do some testing on the actual golf course. We'll check out the remote. We'll play some holes of golf, see how it does, how easy it is to use this device. And uh, I'm really, really looking forward to it. As I said, uh, when I was testing out the seat, I've gotten up there and wait. I think I could start walking some golf courses and I think that'd definitely help. Uh, and I'm really, really pumped to use this. So I'm that way I'm not too exhausted where I can't play the round of golf having to carry my bag. And yes, I know I get a lot of people give me comments about that, but I'd rather just walk behind my bag, enjoy the round of golf, have a seat every once in a while if I need to, since I've had two knee surgeries and uh, I'm really looking forward to using it. So let's take it out to the golf course now and we'll give you our review on the Bat Caddy X8R right now. All right, so here you see the Bat Caddy. We're gonna pull it out of the cart just to kind of show you how easy it is. Mine, I didn't even have to tuck it down. It had a little bit more room, but this can actually fold down as well if you need it to. I'm just gonna go ahead and set it down here on the ground. We're gonna pick this up here, and that's pretty much it. So now it's gonna be ready for our bag. Now we're gonna grab our golf bag, and our golf bag is just simply gonna fit right on top here. I'm going to go ahead and snap that in. We're ready to go. So it seems to be handling these hills okay. It does go up on the front wheel, but that's what those back wheels are for, to keep it from tipping over. So far, so good, even with my equipment on there. A little bit extra weight. It is very finicky with the right and left, though. you got to keep an eye on that. See, when you first drive it, it goes up a little bit. My bag's not very heavy, though, but still. And I'm left. All right, so, so far so good. It does go up on a wheel. Again, my bag's not very heavy, but has lots of good speed to it if you want to use it. You see me pushing left and right. Very minor adjustment. And it will actually turn it quite significantly. So maybe a little bit of tweaking on the left and right would be good. But overall, good speed. And it will actually go, I think, up to 30 yards in front of you before it stops. So we'll see if it stops, if it gets out of range. All right, so we're here on the left-hand side trying to find our golf ball. The card just rolled over a ball and did fine. Again, I think my, my golf bag might be a little light for uh, using this right now, just because I'm using these Sticks golf clubs. And um, I really don't have much weight in that bag. I should have probably added some more weight to it, to be honest. I did raise the height of the pole a little bit. I think that helped balance it a little bit more. Because before I was wanting to go up on two wheels. I'm gonna stop it there. It's off to the right. All right, so hit a shot, we're ready to go again. Now, if you look at the bottom of the cart, it does have a dual wheel, which they call the Mountain Slayer. And that allows it to go up and down hills without tipping over. We're gonna put that to the test today and make sure we check that out. Again, on the right, you do see that we put the seat on there, so I'll also be testing that out, I'm sure. So let's see how fast this thing goes. That's pretty much full speed there. And it should stop after it gets too far away from me. Let's see if it does. Or if it just goes haywire and takes off on its own. Still going. Still going. Oh God, still going. There we go. <laughs> 
It finally stopped and I was worried for a minute. Jeez. All right. It did stop. That's good. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Now, this device also has dual motors, which is going to make it run a lot smoother as well. Again, this is the Bat Caddy X8R. You see me here on the right side of the green. I'll get me a little gap wedge or pitching wedge and we'll see if we can hit a shot for par. Of course, this is the appeal of a cart is that you can take it right next to the green. A little quick on those turns. It's a little quick on the turns for my liking. I'd like to see that adjusted slightly. It's at a decent speed and you click right and the thing wants to do almost a complete 180. Got a little shot here. So we get a 52 onto the green. Not my best, but we'll take it. Let's put it out. Joe side. That's a bogey. Got some shaky hands today. Got those shaky hands. Take a bogey on the first hole, especially because we're playing with our new toy here. All right, so let's take a look at some of the features I really like about this cart as well. You come in closer here, Olivia. If you have a scorecard, you want to do this manually. You got a scorecard holder right here. I took this off just for now, but this is an umbrella holder that will go straight up and hold an umbrella. The reason why I took it off is I was going to try to record some stuff. Uh, it didn't work out quite the way I wanted it, so I'm going to take that off. But basically, you got a phone holder here as well that you can utilize. And on the right side down here, there's the cup holder as well. So lots of accessories you could add. And of course, you saw the seat. Let's test the seat out, Olivia, see how we do. I know we did this indoors. Ah. All right, just need a quick break. You wanna keep it straight, nice even squat. Don't lean one forward or one way or the other, but it does give you a load off if you need it and you're overweight like me, but you need a quick break, you got bad knees, this would do the job. All right, got a nice shot down there. Let's take this card out there and see how we do. I duffed it, but I'll take it. So if you look at the bottom of my bag here, the sticks bag that we just did a review on recently, you'll notice it's not really sitting in there properly. Um, part of the reason why is it has a big kickstand thing on the back that it's meant to be a, a carry bag. And you can kind of see it from this angle. So it doesn't allow it to sit perfect in there. Uh, that's one thing just to kind of keep in mind. I did find a little loop on the front that I kind of looped it through. So it's just kind of free hanging there but it's doing the job so far. All right, so let's talk about some of the features. I'm gonna look it up because it's too much to talk about on camera, to be honest. Uh, but we got the fully directional remote control. Again, testing it, left and right, it's a little finicky. Forward and backwards, fine. I'd like to see some minor adjustments to the left and right just because it can do a quick turn on you. But other than that, I like that. We talked about the dual motors, a motor on each side for each wheel, basically. There's nine forward and reverse speeds. So this thing will actually go quite quick, more than Maybe I'm comfortable with right now until I get the hang of it, but it does go pretty quick. It also has a downhill speed control. So if it's going down a hill and you have it at a constant speed, it's gonna maintain that speed instead of going really fast down the hill, which I like. It has optional manual control. So let's say I'm out here, my battery dies. And right here on the, on the front, there's a battery indicator that will indicate to me the battery level. Let's see if we can get that on camera. It'll tell you basically how much battery is left with the device. And then it does have cruise control with speed recall. So you can actually recall the exact same speed you were using before. If you hit stop, there's a stop button on the remote. And then you hit forward again, it's gonna keep it at that speed that was at before, which I really like. Um, there's a true free wheel mode. So again, if you were to run out of battery and just wanna use the wheels and push it, then you can do that as well. Auto time distance control, we tested that one out. Kind of scared me for a minute, but it stopped, which is good. Mountain Slayer, which is the two back tires that you see down here that we showed you earlier. That's gonna keep your cart from tipping over in theory. And again, we're gonna be testing that out as well. It is compatible with the caddy seat, which we showed down here. I've already tested that one out, even at 285, 290, question mark. Uh, it still holds my weight, so that's awesome. And then we got a basic accessory package, which came with it, it has a scorecard, the umbrella holder, and a drink holder, which we see down there. So lots and lots of cool stuff that comes with this cart. Price range for everything we see here with the lithium battery, and everything total right under $1,400.
If you have any questions on that, just let me know. All right, so we're coming up to our ball here on the second hole. And uh, again, this thing's pretty easy to control overall. It's just a little bit finicky left or right. I'm wondering if I put a heavier golf bag on there, if that'll adjust. It's right in the edge there, see? A little bit finicky here and there, but you'll get the hang of it. It's just my first time using it, so it's going down a hill here. So it should keep a constant speed, even going downhill, which is nice. And again, this is the whole appeal of walking a course. You don't have to worry about getting out of your cart when it's roped off, like what you see here. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit, just so I don't wanna get it too far ahead of me. And you'll see my golf ball up there, near the 100 marker on this hole. But overall, I've been very pleased with it. It's been riding very smooth. Again, just a little nitpicky thing would be adjusting the control to see if I can make it without running over the sign. There we go. And you can walk straight to your ball. Now I'm finding that between two speeds, one's slightly slow for my walk and one's slightly fast for my walk. So I just kind of adjust as I go. Nothing too crazy, nothing too hard to do. And I'm gonna stop it right by my ball. And we're good to go, take this next shot. Little short, little short. Yeah, so let's test this out. Here's a good true test on this cart. Got a good hill. Make sure this thing doesn't tip over. We're gonna go down and up this hill and see how we do. And you can adjust the speed if you want, but it's gonna auto control the speed a little bit for you. Now I would be worried. Hey, maybe my cart's gonna go haywire and my clothes will end up in the water. I can stop it anytime I want with the stop button. Slow it down, speed it up. Overall doing very well. Part of this is a trust thing just because this is the first time for me using it, but let's see if we can get it up on the green. It's not gonna damage anything. It's a good appeal to it. It's going a little right, a little right. Get up there. There we go. I can stop it right there. All right, so we got a 52 here. So we chip it up near the flag stick. A little bit hard. We've got a decent putt for par. All right, this one's gonna break hard to my right. We'll get in the hole. Take it for par. All right, so I wanna to talk to you about a couple other features on the Bat Caddy. Um, number one, I didn't talk about this earlier, but I wanna show you. If you'll zoom in over here, Olivia, there is actually a USB port. And that is going to be to allow you to use this to charge some of your devices. So if you have a phone or a GPS, uh, you have a USB, you can plug it right into the cart. So you can't beat that, that's really cool. Um, question about the cart as far as how heavy it is when we take it in and out of the car. Um, I'm gonna put the right weight above if I'm wrong, but I think it's about 30 pounds total. And then if you add the battery, depending upon if you pick the lithium or the advanced lithium, you're gonna add another four to seven pounds from there. And if you pick the big battery, that's 25 pounds. So just to kind of give you an idea on the weight. Um, as far as the bag, I have a very, very light bag on this, probably even too light to be honest for some of the maneuvers and things that it's doing out here. Um, but it will hold up to 77 pounds, I believe is what it says on their website as well. So if you're curious about, you have a bigger bag, a staff bag or something, as long as it's under 77 pounds, I think you're good to go, according to Bat Caddy's website. All right, so here's a good test. We got a nice hill here. Let's see how it does up this big hill. See, it's tipping backwards, but that's what those wheels are for. It's supposed to allow it to tip backwards without tipping over. Again, the right and left is just a little finicky. We're gonna be over here on the left, so we don't have to walk all the way around, which is nice. Let's bring it up here to where we're gonna be teeing off. And not really at any point through this process have I brought it up to max speed, just because I don't feel like I need it, to be honest. But that's where we're at right now. Okay, so we're on hole three. It's gonna be 154 yards away. We'll be using a seven iron. Got our awesome X8R over there, just ready for us to go as soon as we hit our shot.
We ate all nuts, a little left of the green, right by the sand. So if you're looking over there with the camera, I'm left of the sand bunker. So let's see, let's see, let's really put this thing to the test here on this hole. Let's see how it does going down that hill. I'm a little worried about it, to be honest. Well, let's see, uh, I'm sure Bat Caddy puts their, puts their name behind their brand. They've always been known to be a good brand. So let's test it out, see how it does. We'll take it a little slower down the hill, just so we're not getting crazy here. Now, of course, normally, I wouldn't even worry about taking the cart down there. I'd just stop it here and take my club down there like most normal people would do. But we're here to test this thing out in full mode here, so I wanna see how it's gonna do down this hill. I'm gonna keep that pace. We're gonna turn it slowly, because I know it likes to turn a little crazy. And let's see how it does. And I stopped it right there. So it held its own down the hill. We'll see, we'll hit a shot. We'll send it back up that hill and see how we do. All right, so I'm gonna hit a 56 degree up this hill here. Let's see if we can get it close to that flag stick. On another par, not another bogey. We'll see how we do. All right, could be around there. Let's test this bad boy out. Okay, bring it forward and then we'll rotate it 180 degrees. All right, now it's gonna need some speed to get up that hill, I think. See, it wants to, wants to tip back, but it won't because of those wheels. Send it straight up that way. It's working, it's working. It got up there and we're good. Just stopped it there. I'm gonna use the Texas wedge here. I'm sure y'all know about the Texas wedge at home. I'm just better with my putter than I am with my wedge. Let's see how good I am though. Not very, not very good at all. That was a pretty bad shot. That's my fault though. All right, let's putt for bogey. Nope, double bogey it is. Right, well, we're not here to see me play horrible golf. We're here to check out the cart. All right, so let's talk about two other things. Um, and it's amazing what you find out if you just read the manual. But this is your rheostat control. If you want to set a speed manually, you can adjust this dial here, or you can click it off there. You'll see it here, click, off, on, forward, backwards, and it'll adjust how fast the cart will go. So you can also do the same with your remote. Now, on the remote, there's a time button that you'll see here. If you push it once, it'll adjust your cart 10 meters slash yards, and then stop. Okay, it's a little farther than 10 meters, but I only pushed it once, right? Let's bring it back to us. Okay, once should be 10 meters, you push it twice, should be 20 meters, push it three times, 30 meters. So if you're walking behind it and just wanted to go 10 meters further, you would just push the time button. So, but I'm just gonna stand here, push it once, and it should just be 10 meters slash yards, just one time. So I'll tell you what I feel is 10 yards. I feel about right there is about 10 yards. Seems to go slightly further than 10 yards, but I mean, that's probably closer to maybe 15 to almost 20 yards, right? I would say, yeah. yeah. Now from there, I can just control it manually again, as you see. So if you just wanted to go in increments, you can push the time button. That's what the time button on the remote is for. There's also a time button on the actual cart itself that you can push just so you have a heads up at home. Now, as far as range, Seems that it's as far as it will go, you know, based upon your environment. Um, for us, it was over, easily over 100 yards that it went, and I was still able to stop it. Obviously, you don't want to let it get that far out in advance. You just don't. You won't, who knows if you can stop it or not in time. And, you know, I would, I would tell you at home, 
to keep it within about 20 to 30 yards max of you. But there's really no reason to not have it just within about 10, 15 feet, I feel. I feel that's the best option and the best way to go with the cart. Just walk along with it, use a time button if you need to, but overall just use the remote forward and backwards and you're good to go. Now, got a cool little ravine here. Let's test this out. Let's see how this, this does with this ravine. I'm not even gonna slow it down. I'm just gonna keep it around that pace right there and let's see how it does. It's a good test to see if it's gonna tip or not. Now I'm sure with a steep enough hill, got stuck there. Oh, let's see if we have enough power to get out. Nope, so it got stuck. So it'll still get stuck here and there, but it, it didn't tip over, which I feel is important. So just manually push it, grab it with your hand, give it a little slight push, and then let it go on its way. All right, one other thing I wanna to talk to you about at home is the actual battery on the cart. So when you order the X8R, you can order three different batteries with it. Your first option would be a sealed lead battery. Now that's gonna be kind of what you're used to with a car, to be honest, like 25 pound battery. And it would be something that have a life cycle of 100 to 150 times using it on the course. Uh, what I have is actually the lithium battery. So you have two options with lithium. You have the game manager, which is the standard lithium iron battery, lithium ion battery. And that's going to have life cycle of about 400 to 500 usage total. And that weighs four pounds. So that's a big difference between 25 pounds and four pounds. And then we have the advanced lithium battery. That one is an upgraded price to 300. And that's going to give you a life cycle of 1000 to 1500 uses, depending upon how you use it. Now you don't have to keep it charged the entire time. I charged mine, let it charge up. I took it off the charger. And the day before I used it for a couple hours, I charged it right before we came out here. And that's what's recommended. You don't want to keep it on there for months at a time because you'll start to decharge the battery. So that's something just to keep in mind at home. And that's going to adjust the price of the X8R between 1,000 with the standard battery and up to 1,400 with the advanced lithium battery as well. All right, so we got a par five here. I'm going to try to get a nice driver shot down the left-hand side, left of those trees down there. Nice little fade going back right to the middle of the fairway. We got a good shot down there. And I've still been enjoying these sticks golf clubs. Still been testing them out, enjoying them. Still need to give me some club head covers for them though. They don't have any on their website right now, but been enjoying those clubs. All right, so this is gonna be the last hole that we play with you guys today, testing out this cart. I'm still gonna continue to test it. And I uh, hope to put multiple rounds on it to be able to give you a really good review later on. So if you guys have any questions down the road, Reach out to me anytime at Roland at mygaragegolf.com. I'll give you my honest input on it. Again, I'm not affiliated in any way, shape, or form with Bat Caddy. We met them at the 2022 PGA Show, and uh, we asked for the opportunity to review a product, and they sent it to us. So we, uh, we have the, the right to give an honest, independent review on their cart, which is what we're doing here. And overall, I would say I'm very impressed with it. It's a really cool product. Definitely catches the eye of people. We, we had several people come up and ask us what we were doing, what we're testing. And uh, it's a really, really cool device. I, I like it. Um, definitely really cool. Finicky thing here or there would be the adjustment on the remote. Some people would like the ability to have it just follow you as well. Um, I don't know how much I would love that feature, but it's nice to maybe have that on a future model. But I don't think that's something I absolutely would need with the device either. But overall, really enjoying it. Um, the only thing I would change so far is maybe the ability to add a bag that's a stand bag like that, or, or basically one that has a kickstand. Doesn't want to sit in there perfect, but it works. And then the only other thing I would change is just some adjustment on the remote. Just because left and right, when you're going slow, it doesn't really matter, but when it speeds up a little bit, it wants to adjust the cart pretty quickly. Nothing that would be a deal breaker for me, it's nice to get out and get some exercise. I could definitely use it. And it allows you to think about your shot between your first shot and your next shot. You're walking, you're thinking about what you're gonna do. And it really gives you, you know, a good feel without having to carry your golf clubs. It's like having your own caddy, which is awesome. Just uh, except for without the, the advice on what, what club to use. So 
I'm really enjoying it and uh, looking forward to continue using it here and getting some good exercise down the road. Good range too, it'll stop it quickly. Right when you hit stop, that thing reacts, that's good. That way if you're talking to a friend and all of a sudden you're like, hey, where's my cart? It's going towards the water. You need to hit stop quickly, that's important. All right, so now I admit I haven't played the best golf today or really any day for that matter, but it's hard to review, talk, and play around the golf at the same time. If you haven't done it, give it a try. It's definitely difficult. But uh, I'm enjoying reviewing the cart and that's the most important part. So let's hit a hybrid. We're a good distance away, still over, probably over 300. So let's get it down there and see how close we can get it. All right, good shot down there. Nice little fade, wind got it a little bit, but we're in the fairway. We're walking, nah, 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 we're walking. Too bad I can't stand on it, like a segue, but that kind of defeats the purpose of walking, huh? What do you think, Olivia? Yeah, <laughs> got my trooper Olivia here filming me walking while I'm playing. Couldn't have this channel without her. If you guys want to see anything else at home, let us know. We'd love to show you. Olivia's getting started into golf as well. So we're gonna have a new series coming up with Olivia called The Pursuit of Par. I think that's what we went with, right? Yeah. And uh, Olivia's gonna be taking some lessons and I'm gonna be taking lessons with her. And we're gonna follow her on her journey to par. See, turn a little left there. And uh, see how she does as she progresses towards the game of golf. Not her favorite sport. What's your favorite sport, Olivia? Uh, tennis. Tennis is her favorite sport, but to play. She gets a little angry sometimes in golf. I just don't have to. I'm gonna stop it right there. I just don't trust where that's gonna go. You will have some circumstances where you get a big lip like this, like you didn't wanna go over that lip. I just stop it. Don't trust it too much where you'll let it go into a, a ravine. And then once I get it up there, I just push it with my hand briefly and then let the motor take over from there. So it's not perfect. I mean, nothing's perfect. There's always room for improvement, but it's a really cool device, you know. I always give it to you guys straight here. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna point you to a product that, that isn't worth it, you know. And to me, not having to push the cart, just be able to walk behind it, that's really cool. Just being able to enjoy the walk, enjoy the course, get some exercise, and just kind of enjoy yourself out there, so. Right around this kind of weather is perfect for that. Speed it up, see how fast it goes. I'm gonna stop it right by my ball, see how close we get it. And stop. Oh, a little past. I pushed it too late. That's my fault, not the cart's fault. Now we can reverse it too. Oh, we went too far. Stop. Pretty cool. Can't beat that in my book. All right, so I got 82 yards on my watch. Let's go ahead and hit. See, so we got a 56 there, 82 yards. Let's see how we do. Nope, bad shot again. And I'm still getting used to these sticks golf clubs too, to be honest. So I'm, uh, this is only really my second time using the sticks clubs, which are a little more flexy than what I'm used to. But we're gonna keep it 100% real here. And we got a cord up here, so I just power through it. What do you think? Power through? Show it, man. So let's see, see what it does. Let's power through the cord. Just kidding. Stop. <laughs> let's not do that. Let's pick up the cord and we'll go underneath. We unstaked it instead. Went over it, I'm gonna stop it. And we will stake it back into place. There we go. No problems here. All right, a little left. We got a putt for par. About 10 feet away. So greens are a little bumpy out here today. They just aerated a while back.
but we'll take that one for par. So, play four holes. I think we got, what, a double bogey, a bogey, and two pars. Four holes plus three. It's about the garage golf way. But overall, testing out the cart, had a great time doing it. If you have a specific question on the Bat Caddy X8R, please let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. I'm happy to do follow-up videos for you guys as well on any questions that you have or anything that you'd like to see. You know what, while I'm talking, I'm just gonna pop a squat. <sighs> yeah. So this seat will hold up to 300 pounds at least. I'm just telling you guys that now. It's comfortable, allows me a place to sit. And uh, Bat Caddy, thank you for sending us the cart to test out at home. Uh, here on the channel and again no affiliation with Bat Caddy whatsoever but if you have any questions you want an honest answer happy to give it to you reach out to me at roland at mygaragegolf.com and until the next time as always keep on golfing we'll see you guys on the next one thanks so much